Earl Silas Tupper was an American-born businessman and inventor, best known as the inventor of Tupperware, an airtight plastic container for storing food. This, this was termed good design by MOMA, where curator Edgar Kaufman aimed to promote everyday objects that economically combined beauty and function, aligned with the precepts of the modern movement. Tupperware was greatly looked upon as it was affordable and easily accessible to the average American. Earl Silas Tupper was born in 1907 in Berlin, New Hampshire, USA, and was the only child of Ernest and Lulu Tupper. Tupper and his family moved south, uh, moved south to Providence, Rhode Island. From a young age, Earl was interested in business and making money. He would go door to door selling his family's farm produce. Earl's father was a person who loved to build and tinker, and he created several labour-saving gadgets. He was granted a patent for a device that facilitated the cleaning of chickens. Perhaps Earl Tupper developed his talent for inventions by watching his father. As he got older, Tupper studied at Bryant and Stratton, now commonly known as Bryant University. After graduating, Earl continued to work in the family business for a few years until he was 19, where his parents owned a nursery in Shirley, Massachusetts. By then he had determined that somehow, as a businessman, he would make a million dollars by age 30. In 1928, Earl took a course so he could start his own business selling uh, tending trees and landscaping. His successful venture, the Tupper Tree Doctors Company gave him the opportunity to create a wide variety of inventions, which included a woman's corset, a special hairpin dubbed Shore Stay, and a portable tie rack. Although he started his landscaping business during the Great Depression, it was a successful venture. The Tupper Tree Doctors stayed open for six years. During this time, Tupper also kept himself busy by conducting various experiments and also writing a series of scientific papers that described his vast interests and numerous ideas for inventions. Although his success in the Tupper Tree Doctors, by the age of 30 he was forced into bankruptcy instead of having made his first million. In 1936, Tupper went to work for Doyle Works, an inventor working at the plastics manufacturing division of the DuPont Corporation in Leominster, Massachusetts. This is where Earl became intrigued with the possibilities of plastic and decided to work at the plastics plant where he later said, according to the records of the Mu National Museum of American History, it was at DuPont that my education really began. Prior to World War II, Tupper conducted his earliest experiments with plastics. After working at DuPont for a year in 1938 at the age of 31, he took the experience and expertise he had gained in plastics design and manufacturing at DuPont and set up a business of his own, the Earl S. Tupper Company, which advertised the design and engineering of industrial plastics. Tupper requested polyethylene slag, a waste product of the oil refining process from DuPont which he refined and cleaned the slag to produce a translucent, white, flexible, lightweight, odourless and non-toxic plastic. This improved plastic, called poly-T, became a revolutionary substance in the modern world. This new plastic would be able to withstand almost anything, including sharp knife cuts and near boiling water. Tupper also went on to design injection moulding machines, which help him create shaped objects out of this new plastic this is when he developed his famous airtight lid. For the first few years of Tupper's company, his work mostly consisted of performing subcontract work for DuPont. The company had made most of its money by producing moulded parts for gas masks and signal lamps for the US Navy during World War II. After the war, Tupper turned its attention to the post-war consumer market. He made, he made items such as plastic sandwich picks, unbreakable drinking tumblers, and plastic cigarette cases. Tupper then focused on creating plastic food storage containers that would hold airtight food in a refrigerator, keeping the foods fresh for longer. 
these containers became commonly known as Tupperware. But unfortunately, because of the bad reputation of other plastics, sales were dismal in stores. In 1954, Earl invented tumblers, the plastic cups that were used for drinking liquids. The tumblers are basic in shape, they are single coloured and have no other creative aspects. As Dieter Ram stated in What Was Good Design, Less But Better, these tumblers take on the simplicity of design but are most useful and practical for our everyday use. With the tumblers holding no creative aspects, this leaves the user's home open for self-expression. One of Dieter Ram's good designs is to be unobtrusive. This is exactly what the tumblers are. They don't conflict with any pieces of art that are in the same room. Even though, even though it has been over 60 years since Tupper invented tumblers, it is still being used today, another principle of good design. The tumbler is long. The tumbler is long lasting. Unlike fashionable design, it has lasted many years in today's society. This product is honest. It was designed to hold liquid. It doesn't hold any other promises than that. The consumer is given what they're told with no other expectations. Dieter Rams believed that this was a part of being good design. Honesty. Not only is the product honest, it is useful. The consumer brought it to be used daily and that's exactly what it will do. Cups are used every day and only for one purpose, to drink liquids from. So the buyer is getting what they paid for and will be used every day as Dieter Rams stated that good design is what makes a product useful. Earl Tupper's tumblers has shown me that good design can be done through simplicity. Not all design needs to be covered in artwork just for it to succeed and become popular.